straight in. This is a Martindale fluorescent lamp tester, an FL30. If you've been watching some of Photonic Induction's more recent videos, you may have seen him actually use one of these to test the fluorescent light. So I thought I'd buy one and take it apart. First of all, let's see it in action. You can see it's got a test button on the front. There's a connection on there which puts out 3000 volts at 280 kilohertz uh, relative to ground within the unit so as long as you're not touching the negative of the battery terminal itself you should be okay but it's enough to work to work and actually light up any fluorescent lights which are nearby let me knock off the big light a sec so we can see we can see better what it's doing So you can see it'll work on compact fluorescence, it'll work on stick fluorescence, whether you've got a finger on the other end or not. One thing you've got to be careful of is if you're just about making contact at the other end, it will arc across and burn your fingers. So there's, uh, it'll work on small fluorescence, it'll work on big fluorescence. This is handy so you can see whether the end is blackened. You can work on cold cathode fluorescence. Can work on and that's either a sodium or a metal halide I can't remember which it doesn't seem to like car bulbs it won't light oh, a little bit I think that's just arcing at the end actually yeah it doesn't actually want to strike uh, a car bulb even if you make contact with the other end of the bulb You can get some very interesting effects if you light up a strobe tube. Not quite so interesting if you grab a big metal halide bulb. And obviously neons are affected by it as well. It also comes with a stick, which just clips on, and it's just it's you know so you can you can test uh, lights which are sort of out of reach. That under climb a ladder. So, it's an interesting little gadget. Let's take a look inside. And to get inside, you remove the battery cover, remove one screw from there, there are clips along the insides, and then it pops open. And this is sort of what it normally looks like inside. Normally you'll find a big gob of hot snot holding this transistor in place. What you won't find is these bodge wires. These are here because when I took this out to try and reverse engineer the board, I managed to tear the transistor clean off the board, including its tracks. So, bodge wires aside, this is the circuit. Obviously the, uh, the main thing in here is this large large transformer in here which has three separate windings. There's one there, one there and one across the middle. And a transistor and just a handful of capacitors. There's not much to it. It does also have this strange connector on the end which is just for attaching to the high voltage probe. That snaps into, into place and then the screws hold it down. 
Here's the schematic and it's a flyback driver. And if you look at some of the diagrams online, it's on the simpler end of the scale when it comes to flyback drivers, apparently. I haven't got a clue about flyback drivers. So, I hope you found that an interesting little gadget. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.